God is Almighty. No doubt, God who created heaven and earth is Almighty. Let us pray. Father, we honor you. You who is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present. We exalt your holy name in the mighty, precious name of your Son, Jesus. Allow everyone to live trustingly, to continue believingly that you are almighty, and you will always help us. In Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said amen. God who created heaven and earth is almighty. Jeremiah was called by God. Isaiah was called by God. And when God called, I called Isaiah, he said, because these two prophets look at the, themselves, so they look at to themselves and they know their weaknesses. Isaiah said when called by God, I am I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips because I live in the midst of people of unclean lips. So Isaiah knew his defect. And Jeremiah, when called by God, said, I am still young. So to each one of you, what will be your reason if you are called by God? Perhaps you will say that you are still young. Perhaps you will say that you are just beginning to build a family. There are so many reasons to snub and to reject the call of God. But his calling is a special opportunity and a privilege because not many were called. So if God calls you, then be ready to answer, yes, here I am, Lord, use me. May your answer is not Reason, reason out why you cannot at this time of your calling serve God. Because a special calling from God will, if accepted, will make you in a special place where God has planned to bring you to. So God who created heaven and earth is almighty and He is desiring to see people who will worship Him, who will serve Him and love Him. So Jeremiah reasoned out, I am still young. In spite of that reasoning, God still called Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And then in verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. So Jeremiah was called, though at first he complained that he is still young. Then the Lord promised 
and covenanted with Jeremiah, I will be with you. Just speak the word. The Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouths. So the words that God placed in the mouth of Jeremiah, he is commanded to speak it out. Do not be afraid of people. Just speak the word. And God will be with his word. God will fulfill the word spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. And true to what God has told him, that all of the inhabitants will be against him. And lamentation shows what is happening to Jeremiah in his obedience to fulfill his calling. And in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 20, this is a written word concerning what he suffered. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Verse 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. In spite of all the tests, the trials, the crisis, in spite of being alone, his only companion throughout his ordeal is the mighty presence of God. God never leave him alone. God never has forsaken Jeremiah. God is with Jeremiah. And for Jeremiah to fight against despair, against the pain that he is experiencing, Jeremiah has to remind himself so that hope will be instilled, so that hope shall be increased. And what did Jeremiah reminded of himself? In verse 22, Is it of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not? The mercies and the compassions of the Lord is protecting him Though he has nobody with him, still God preserve him. And that is a mighty evidence that God is with him and that God has never left him alone and that God has never forsaken him. And the mercies of God and the compassions of God always accompany Jeremiah. And in verse 23, though he is suffering many afflictions, the mercies and the compassions of the Lord are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So the faithfulness of God is that He will never neglect Jeremiah. He will never neglect any one of us who obey His call, who follow Him, who serve Him. The faithfulness of God will allow us to experience His mercies and His compassions. He will be with us in times of tests and trials. He will be with us in impossible places. God is faithful and He will be with us. God has promised that I am your helper, I will be with you. I will never forsake you. I will never fail you. I will never let you down. God is faithful in His promise. God is faithful in His word. And He will fulfill, He will perform the purpose of which He purposed to use you. And as you allowed Him to use you, then He will give you mighty victory and all the tests and the trials of that calling. There will be tests and trials when we 
obey the command of God. There will be crisis, but the assurance that God is with anyone who obey Him. The assurance that God will be the one fighting for the battles of those who, is, who are obedient to Him. So at that one point, on one point of His life, in Jeremiah 32, verse 16, Jeremiah 32, verse 16. Now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto ba Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, verse 17, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and he stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. So he expresses his belief and trust on God. And this trust increases in might. Because he focused and centered on the great power of God in creating and making heaven and earth. The great power and the stretched out arm of God. And he declared his trust in God that there is nothing too hard for thee. Though I am facing and going through crises and impossibilities, nothing is too hard for thee. You can help me. You can free me. You can fight the battles for me and through me. That is worship. And then in verse 18, Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts. So always remember that God remains forever and eternally almighty. Do not at any time forget the almightiness of God. His almightiness is forever and eternal. That mightiness, that almightiness will never be dissipated. It will always increase as a person keep on trusting, keep on defending, keep on believing Him. Nothing is too difficult for thee. You are great and mighty God. Your name is the Lord of hosts. And God answered him in verse 27. God answered Jeremiah, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So whatever Jeremiah is facing, God will always help him. The God who called Jeremiah, the go, God who started a good work in the life of, Je of Jeremiah is the very God also that will complete what he has started. So as Jeremiah trusted God, he keep on trusting God, he keep on hoping God, he keep on relying on God. And God revealed his purpose, God revealed his plan for his people. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So God remains forever and eternally almighty. Our impossibilities for God are all possible. And as we believe Him, He will always respond. So as Jeremiah believed Him, 
Then God responded to him, There is nothing too hard for me. All your problems, all your crises are too easy for me. That is what God is telling Jeremiah because he trusted God. Are you trusting God? Do you believe that God can get you out of your crisis? In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? We are the love sake of Christ. His love is centered on every one of us. The moment that we surrendered our life and let Jesus be our Savior and our Lord and God, then we are enveloped in the love of Christ and in the love of the Father. So two envelopments, first Christ and then the second envelopment is the love of the Father. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So our ability to conquer and our blessing that we are more than conquerors, meaning that it is not us who do the conquest. It is not us who do the five things. It is the love of Jesus. Who? Glory. So the love of Jesus is doing the five things. The love of Jesus is doing the conquering. And that victory of Jesus is given to us freely. Because he loves us. Jesus is doing the fighting for us because he loves us. And then in verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. So Paul is saying here that he is 100% believing that Christ will never forsake him. That Christ will never leave him in defeat. Though he passes through persecution, though he passes through tests and trials, he believed that death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present and things to come. Verse 39, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Where is the love of the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord? So nothing can ever separate us from the love of Christ which is the love of God in Christ Jesus. So our victory is our faith. And our faith works because of our love. And our love is the love of God. Delivered to us by the Holy Spirit. God who created heaven and earth is on our side and He is almighty. So in whatever situation you might be at this moment, you are to be victorious. And the way for victory is to remain in the love of Jesus Christ, which is the love of the Father that is expressed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage and persuade you that you shall attain to your conquest and victory, courtesy, by the grace, by the favor of the Father through His Son. God is so faithful. 
His mercies and His compassions fail not. Fail not. They are new every morning. New every morning. So let us trust that God is faithful. That there is nothing too hard for Him. And He will perfect what He has started in your life as well as in my life. God is great. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your love that is in Jesus. Thank you that we are enveloped and that envelopment is in the love of Jesus and in your love. And we are mightily assured of your faithfulness. We are mightily Sure that you will never let us all by ourselves. We thank you so much. And may you receive all the praise and the honor as we continue on trusting and hoping and believing that we are safe in your loving care. Bless everyone and receive all the honor and the glory in Jesus Christ's name. And I challenge everyone who is at this time faced with impossibilities believe God and nothing will be impossible with you so if you believe God then trust God in whatever situation that you might be in right now say to the father father I entrust this situation of mine so de de declare what your situation is because you know well where you are at. I entrust my situation now. I entrust my need now. I entrust my health into your loving hand now. And I believe. And I am wholly persuaded that it is you alone and from you alone that healing will come to everyone. That provision will come to everyone. And that you will bring everyone to a large place where you will reward all of them. Because they prayed with me this prayer. So bless them in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Ang natapos na palatuntunan ay nagpapatuloy dahil sa inyong mga pinansyal na kaloob na ibinibigay sa Greg Durante Ministries. Para po sa pagpapatuloy ng programang ito, kailangan po namin ang inyong panalangin at pinansyal na suporta sa bawat kaloob ng inyong ipapadala, anuman ang halaga. Bibigyan po namin kayo ng anointing oil bilang pasasalamat sa inyong pagtulong at pagsuporta sa Greg Durante Ministries. Nakagagalak at nakakatuwa na maalaala ang kagandahan ng Diyos. Sapagkat ang sama-sama nating pagkakaisa at pagkakasundo ang siyang dahilan ng tagumpay ng gawain upang ang prayer mountain at ang prayer and worship building ay ating maitayo. At kita natin sa screen ang ang larawan na naabot na natin sa ating construction. At ito ay muling nangangailangan pa ng karagdagang salapi upang ito ay ating matapos. Kaya ang hamon ko, magkaloob ang bawat isa. At kung kaya mong magkaloob ng halaga na sa iyong paniniwala ay makalulwalhati at makalulugod sa Panginoon, halaga na hindi mo pa na isa sa gawa at ni hindi mo pa na ipagkaloob kailan paman. Kaya sa makapangyarihang pangalan ni Jesus, ako ay dudulog sa Diyos upang sa iyong pagtanggap ng hamon ay makakilos at makagawa ang Diyos sa iyo at maranasan mo ang walang ubos na biyaya. O Diyos, lahat ng sumusubaybay sa palatuntunan ito ay may bukas na puso at bukas na isipan 
At ang bukas na langit ay nararanasan nila sa araw-araw. At hayaan mo na sa bukas nilang palad, dumaloy ang libo-libong salapi para makumpleto ang gusali na dalanginan. Sa makapangyarihang pangalan ni Jesus, bless them, prosper them, at maranasan nila ang kaginhawahan at kapayapaan sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. And for our Sunday worship schedule from 9.30 in the morning until 11.30 in the morning and 4.30 in the afternoon until 6.30 in the evening on 2nd Floor, Medical Building, Ortigas Avenue, Green Hills at 1. And for more information, you can call us at 632-726-8016 or you can text us at 63915-391-7408. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.